In October 2013, countries around the world, including Guyana, signed the Minamata Convention on Mercury. Minamata is the name of the city in Japan where mercury-laden wastewater, discharged from a chemical factory between 1932 and 1965, led to the death of approximately 2,000 persons. While the Minamata Convention on Mercury does not ban outright the use of mercury in small and artisanal gold mining, it obligates countries like Guyana to take concrete steps to significantly reduce the use of mercury in mining. The convention, however, bans new mercury mines and severely restricts international trading of the substance. Eventually, therefore, mercury will become harder to obtain and will likely cost more. This development is a positive one for several reasons. Not only will the harmful effects of mercury be reduced because of less usage, but it will help to move the local mining community towards adopting mercury-free methods of recovering gold. The evidence has shown mercury-free methods to be more efficient than amalgamation in extracting gold, including fines. And more gold means more money for miners. And that is why from the government standpoint we're looking at mercury-free technology to support miners because that will move recovery from 30 to 40 percent all the way up to the 90 percent and even beyond. It will increase and optimize efficiency. This video introduces some of the common mercury-free or low mercury gold recovery devices. These devices are known as secondary concentrators. They are therefore used after primary concentrators have initially upgraded the feed. The sluice box is, of course, the most widely used of the primary concentrators. Similar to other primary devices, sluices concentrate the material that comes directly from hydraulicing or jetting of pit faces or suctioning of river sediments. They trap or retain heavy minerals known as black sands and hopefully gold particles. On the other hand, secondary concentrators are used to further refine the material collected by the primary systems. The list of secondary concentrators we will look at include centrifuges, the shaking table, the vortex bowl, the spiral wheel, the spiral chute, and magnets. We first look at centrifuges. A centrifuge consists of a rotating bowl that has a series of ridges that trap gold as the bowl spins. So what's going on, it's going to spin at a high rate of speed. And it's going to force all the material to the outside and up into these two riffles here. These are actually riffles. But what we've got going on, there's holes inside of here and the water is constantly being forced in to keep the material in motion. So when the heavies are settling to the outside in the riffles, all the light stuff blows up over the top and out over the sides we had there. This is basically, it's a Falcon centrifuge concentrator. And now it's time. Do you check your pound and check your The recommended models for small and medium-scale gold mining in the Guyanas are the Nelson 7.5 inches and the Falcon B6, which are capable of processing 0.64 tons per hour and 0.5 tons per hour respectively. Centrifuges require skilled labor and the availability of clean water to achieve desired separation. Shaking tables are slightly inclined with a trough along the lower edge and slightly raised ridges along their length. The mineral feed and water are added along the high edge of the table and a motor is used to shake the table. Inclination, water flow and shaking result in particle movement along the table towards the lowest corner. Light particles are more easily washed over the ridges than heavy particles, separating them along the table and creating a heavy, gold-rich concentrate. The particles are directed by grooves in the table's surface. Shaking tables can provide excellent separation of liberated gold from other materials and produce high-grade concentrates greater than 50%. 
the gold must, with some models, still be extracted from the concentrate using another process. A popular model in French Guyana is the Gemini table. Recovery efficiencies are excellent down to approximately 325 mesh size, which is about the finest particle size that can be observed with the human eye. Some models can be expensive, however, and require careful attention and training to operate effectively. One of the common models, the Gemini model GT60 MK2, designed to process up to 60 pounds per hour, costs over US $8,000. Vortex bowls are extremely simple devices and can be easily fabricated. During the final step of producing a high-grade concentrate, vortexes are particularly good at capturing fine gold. Water enters a 30 to 50 centimeter bowl at an angle from a hose, causing the water to rotate, creating a whirlpool which drains out through an elevated hole in the center. Concentrate is placed into the bowl and the spinning water suspends light particles, while heavier particles, example gold, are left behind. The suspended particles flow through the elevated drain into a bucket below. Water flow can be supplied by a small pump or a raised water vessel. Vortexes are very cheap, costing less than US $100 and simple to operate very important that you do have this absolutely level because that'll make make sure that all the material is evenly leveled throughout your blue bowl and that it's going through the center correctly so i'm going to always check that and i check that quite frequently the second is the water flow right now it's just a tad bit too much but you'll learn uh, over time and playing with it and experimenting which water flow makes the best but but i i like to have it a little bit higher because i know that any material is going to fall down into my fossicker's pan and not going to escape. And of course, I will either run this through the blue bowl again at a, at a slower pace or I'll just pan this out. So let's start testing some material. All right, I've heard of, uh, of a million different ways to, to insert your material into the blue bowl. Uh, putting it in front of the flow, behind the flow, you know, putting it in and then turning the water on, whatever it may be. Uh, I like to just kind of spoon it in. And uh, so I'm going to take, take it here and, and just kind of drop it in and just gradually uh, let it fall through without, without trying to disrupt the, uh, the water flow. So there you can see the uh, material going in. I'm going to put one more spoonful. And I'm not real worried, like I said, about any gold getting out uh, because I do have my, my safety pan below. So let's, uh, let's give this a try and see how it, uh, see how it goes. You can see the material coming up the cone and out, and that's all the lighter material. All the gold will stick around. Matter of fact, there's a piece of gold right there that you can see. A couple of pieces. Now, obviously, this was all this was all gold that my son was uh, was panning. So, let's see what we come up with. You can see when the material falls out through the blue bowl, comes down into my Fossicker's pan, and then really acts like a sluice. Uh, you know, you can see a lot of black sand. Uh, caught up in these ripples right here. Very, very rarely do I have any gold that makes us this far. Spiral wheel concentrators are specialized pans with spiral grooves on their surface, mounted on a tilted axis. They can be useful to work concentrates from many kilograms down to a few hundred grams. The concentrate produced by a spiral concentrator may be suitable for zero mercury treatments, such as direct smelting. Typically, a small motor run by a battery turns the pan and water showers the spirals. Concentrates are added to the bottom of the pan using a small scoop. Heavy minerals are carried upwards in the spirals as water washes lighter minerals back down. Heavy particles like gold remain in the spirals and are lifted up to drop through a hole in the center of the pan into a cup. Wheels can cost between U.S. $300 to $400. Spiral Chutes Spiral Chutes separate minerals according to their relative movement in response to gravity, centrifugal force, and other forces in the fluid medium. Generally, a chute may have five to seven turns. In its simplest design, the chute is fed from a hopper at the top and washed down with water to achieve a slurry. The slurry swirls down and generates a centrifugal force which separates the ores and sands. The ore concentrate, 
is collected through a pipeline and the tailings are discharged. Manufacturers highlight the virtues of spiral shoots as delivering high recovery, high efficiency and precise separation with simple installation, minimal maintenance requirements, low operating cost and long operating life and minimal operator attention. Magnets are often used as a tool to enhance concentration and to remove magnetic materials, mostly magnetite. A handheld magnet is used to remove unwanted minerals with care to avoid losing gold. To do this, the magnet is used below the pan to separate magnetic from non-magnetic minerals. A piece of paper or plastic is often used to cover the magnet so that the minerals can be easily removed from it. When a vortex bowl or a small sluice is in operation, a magnet may be used to remove black sand from the processed feed to increase their efficiency. We'll take the neodymium rare earth magnet that we have in our plunger magnet and we'll help a little bit speed matters up by lifting off some of the magnetics and we won't even take a chance with those. We'll put those right back in the center just like that. If there's a piece of gold hooked to it, it will be right back in our sluice for us again. I'm going around about the same speed as the water speed so I don't interrupt the water flow. And the magnetics just keep coming. Magnets have also been used to form sluice beds by making a carpet of magnetite. In certain cases, these magnetic sluices can improve the efficiency of recovering fine gold from concentrates. A thin magnetic sheet is placed on a small sluice. Magnetic mineral particles collect on the surface forming a bed into which fine gold particles can settle. So we see, secondary concentrators come in various modes, complexities, and of course, prices. Simple models can be designed and fabricated in local workshops. Most of the devices have a short learning curve, meaning it does not take long to learn how to set up and operate them properly. There are good reasons for local miners to introduce gold recovery methods that use less mercury or no mercury at all. Apart from being more environmentally friendly, these systems, one, produce more gold and therefore make more money, two, give miners more visual clues to control and monitor how well the gold is being concentrated, three, can be easy to move and set up, and four, comply with environmental standards. Make it absolutely clear, we are not and will not condone irresponsible mining. We will not condone in mining that is destructive to the environment. We will not condone mining that is contrary to our act as well as our regulation. But we will promote and we will support legal mining. We will promote and support safe mining. We will promote also mining that takes into account social issues as well as, very importantly, environmental issues. If you want mining to stay, to progress, and to be efficient, we must also ensure that it is done in accordance with our laws, with our regulations, and also with good mining practices. Take a look at these systems today. A message from the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission. In collaboration with the World Wildlife Fund, Guyana's.